Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is uh, Mr. Cobalt <clears throat> and in this video I'm going to go over um, how to assign uh, the oxidation states to various things um, using the rules and the oxidation um, chart that we had gone over in a previous uh, video. If you didn't see that video, uh, go to that video. I'll link it in the description section. Um, so <clears throat> here are a list of uh, compounds and elements and we need to assign oxidation states to them. So using the rules, uh, we will go ahead and do that. So uh, the first one is uh, uh, not, uh, chlor chlorine gas, so, or the chlorine element. And so that is gonna uh, uh, be associated with uh, rule number one. Rule, rule number one is that um, the elements uh, that are by themselves, or so atoms in, a, in pure elements, I have a zero oxidation state. So each of the chlorines in here are going to have an oxidation state of zero because it's a pure element. And so that's rule number one. So, uh, so no oxidation states here. Uh, so for B, we have uh, a metal, a sodium, and it has a plus charge. And uh, the ions, according to rule number two, the oxidation state for uh, monatomic ions is the same as the charge on the ion. So we're not talking about ions part of a compound, that's different, but <clears throat> ions by themselves. So the ion here, uh, sodium, has a plus a one plus charge, so the oxidation state is gonna be plus one, okay? <clears throat> so that's uh, rule number two. Rule, uh, so the third one here, we have a compound, uh, an ionic compound has a metal and a nonmetal, and so these are going to be charged. And so then, <clears throat> the first thing we're going to look at is the uh, the metal, because the metal. Remember, there's a hierarchy: one, two, three. Rules one, two, and three, and then you got four and five. And so this, uh, we're going to apply rule number four first. And so we're going to give the metal its oxidation state. So remember, uh, according to rule number four. The oxidation state of group one elements is always a plus one, always. So we're going to assign a, uh, a plus one for the potassium, right? <clears throat> so for potassium, we get a plus one. And then uh, fluorine gets whatever's left over, right? So since this is, uh, we got to apply rule number three. Rule number three says that the overall charges of the, or overall um, oxidation states of the elements in a compound must equal the overall charge of the compound. So since this is a zero, overall zero charge in this compound, then <clears throat> since, uh, since the um, potassium has a, a plus one oxidation state and the overall charge on it is zero, then that means the oxidation state has to be a negative one since we only have one fluorine to balance out the, the oxidation states. Fluorine would then have to have a negative one oxidation state. So a negative one uh, oxidation state for the fluorine. All right, so that's, uh, that's, number, that's C. Now what about D? Uh, I have carbon dioxide. And so since we don't have any metals, we only have non-metals, we're going to go to rule number five. And that was that table where you had the uh, elements, you had fluorine on top, right? And then you had uh, hydrogen and then you had oxygen and so on. So let me get my head back in here. Uh, so so uh, according to that table, fluorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and then you had the group, uh, what was it, group group 7A, group 6A, group 5A, right? So in that order, they have precedence. So the top is going to have precedence over the bottom. So if we're looking here, carbon isn't even on the table. So oxygen is going to come first. So we're going to assign oxidation states to oxygen. And according to the table, it says oxygen gets a negative 2 oxidation state. So oxygen is going to get a negative, negative 2 oxidation state so that's for the oxygen um, since we have two oxygens each oxygen gets the negative two oxidation state so that means we have an overall uh, oxidation state of a negative four 
since uh, the overall charge on our molecule is zero, that means that the overall oxidation states of carbon and oxygen is going to be zero. So the way you figure that out is, well, if, if the overall charge is zero and I have an overall negative oxidation state of four, four then that means I'm going to need an overall oxidation state of plus four for the carbon. And since I only have one carbon, that's, a, that's going to be a plus four charge on that carbon. So the oxidation state for carbon in this molecule is plus four. Uh, so what about E? So now here we have sulfur and oxygen again, and here the overall charge is a negative two. So whatever the oxidation states are here, the overall uh, sum of the oxidation states has to equal negative two. So we look at sulfur and oxygen. Sulfur is in group six. Oxygen is higher on the table. So we're going to assign oxidation states to uh, to the uh, oxygen first. So again, according to the table, oxygen gets a negative two oxidation state. So that's for the oxygen. And then uh, since we have four oxygens, that means that uh, we have a total of uh, four times the negative two. So if we're gonna figure out what the sulfur has, we can do an equation, right? So we have one, one times the sulfur plus, and then we have four oxygens, four. And then for the oxygen, we know it's a negative two uh, oxidation state, so we could put that in there. And that equal, all of this equals together the two negative charge. So we can solve this equation for S, and that's going to give us the oxidation state on S. So we have a negative two. So 4 times negative 2 gives us uh, 8. So we have 1s uh, minus, minus 8 equals uh, a 2 negative, right? So if we add both sides, add 8, add, add eight to both sides, then we get s is equal to uh, 2 uh, minus 8. So that's going to give us a plus 6. So the sulfur has a plus 6 oxidation state. So plus 6 for the sulfur. And that's how you would find that using rule 3. So I'm using rule 3 for both carbon dioxide and, and the sulfate ion uh, because rule 3 says that the sum of all the oxidation states should equal the overall charge on the the uh, polyatomic ion or the molecule. Okay, so now we have two more. This is where it might get a little interesting. So, uh, so for so for F, uh, I have potassium and I have oxygen. Now uh, I have a metal, so metals are going to come first because they are higher in the rules. So the rule for metals comes before the rule for nonmetals, since potassium is a uh, is a group one metal according to the rule number four we we give that a plus a plus one oxidation state so that means that each potassium has an oxy oxidation state of one so the overall charge on this is zero so we can set up our equation so uh, so I have two potassiums so two potassiums times the plus one for the oxidation state, plus if we add the oxidation state of oxygen, so we have two oxygens times whatever, whatever the oxidation state for oxygen is. And the overall, uh, the sum of these should equal zero because the overall charge on the molecule is zero. So let's, let's solve for O. So two plus uh, two times plus one gives us a plus two, uh, and then we have uh, plus two oxygens, and that gives us a zero, right? That's equal to zero. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna subtract two from both sides, and then we have two 
times the number of two oxygens equals negative two. And then we need to divide both sides by two to get oxygen by itself. Okay. And so that gives us, that's going to be equal to a negative one. So that tells us that each oxygen has a negative one oxidation state. So negative one for oxygen. And so you can see here, this is why it's important to follow the rules, because if you don't follow the rules, you would, maybe if you start with oxygen first, you would give that a negative two oxidation state, and then you would have uh, the wrong oxidation state for, for uh, potassium. So, and you'll notice depending on where you are, so here, oxygen uh, has a negative two oxidation state, but here it has negative one oxidation state. So, um, when you are given uh, an element or a group of elements in your compound, when you're following the rules and you get to the last one, you can't just assume that, oh, it's last, oh, oxygen is last, oh, it has negative two. You have to calculate and make sure. So the last element that you need to assign an oxidation state to in a compound, you have to set up the equation and set it equal. The sum of the oxidation states of all the atoms in your compound has to equal the uh, overall uh, charge on the compound. If it's zero, then it has to equal zero. If it's a negative two, then it has to equal a negative two. All right, so that is for G. Okay, and finally, KO2. So again, we have potassium and oxygen this time. Again, so we gotta follow the rules. Potassium comes first. So potassium, because it's in group A, uh, 1A, it's got a plus one oxidation state. So we're gonna say plus one for potassium. And now we do the same thing for oxygen. We have two oxygens and one potassium. So the equation is the sum of the oxidation states. So we have one potassium. So one times the potassium plus we have two oxygen, so two times whatever the oxidation state for oxygen, and again, it's gonna be equal to zero. So we have the oxidation state for uh, potassium, so one times plus one is plus one, plus the two oxygens, whatever the oxidation state for the oxygen is, and all of that should be equal to zero. Subtract both sides, negative one from both sides, and we get a plus, uh, we get two oxygens is equal to negative one. So now we uh, divide by two to get the oxygen by itself. And so we get a negative one half. So that is right. Oxygen in this case gets a negative one half um, oxidation state. So yes, you can have fractions for oxidation states. So this would be a negative one half for the oxygen. And so that's how you figure out the oxidation states using the rules that I went over before. So make sure you know the rules and make sure you follow the order of the rules in terms of precedence. And uh, that's it. And I hope uh, this was helpful. Um, once you are able to figure out the oxidation, oxidation states of the elements, you can now apply that to the uh, reactants and products in your uh, balanced equation and see if you have a redox reaction. And that's the next thing I'm gonna go over in the, in the next video. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you like this video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, make a comment in the comment section and hit the bell for uh, the notification bell so you can be notified for any new videos I put out. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.